Hello and welcome to my first Power Rankings of 2024. We're going to go over my top 25 teams in LOL Esports. Um, you'll see that there's a top 25 already on here. If you are new to the channel, that is what the Discord has decided. We had six different voters um, and they are made up, they are described down here based on the roles in the Discord where their allegiances lie. Um, but the Discord participates. So in the future, if you'd like to participate, do so in a timely fashion. Usually the date I put on the Power Rankings thread is the one, is, is the day that the Power Rankings end, where I will accumulate the votes and then and then do the video. So, um, here we go. Here's the top 25. By the way, this is clearly in a different uh, video format. Uh, right now, I still don't have internet, um, so I'm uploading and recording on my phone. Um, so, with that in mind, please comment down below if the phone is better. Some people in the Discord thought the phone... Um, audio is better and the video quality may be better. I don't know. I don't really give a shit about it either way when it comes to like what's better. I don't personally care when I watch videos that much, but you guys might. So uh, let's do this first. Um, the six voters, two and a half LCK, one and one quarter LPL and LCS, three quarters LEC, one quarter minor regions. That was Jerb, who is a fan of the LJL. Teams that received votes on the Discord that did not make the top 25 in order from most to least. Carmine Corp, DRX, We, Team Wales, Thunder Talk, Team Liquid, Rogue, OMG, EDG, GAM, IG, CFO Flying Oyster, Fear X, FPX, and Breon. A lot of different votes. Keep in mind, because this is the first one of the year, there are going to be teams on here that you may scratch your head and say, really? And I'm going to try and go over that. Um, but remember, this is the start of the season, not necessarily what we think at, at the end. And this is if they play best of fives right now, neutral setting. So first in 25th place, I have rainbow seven of Latin America. And you're going to say to yourself, really? Yeah, really. Um, you probably don't keep track of what happens in minor regions. I really don't either, but, um, summit from team liquid. Uh, he also played for live sandbox or sorry, Sandbox Gaming, FPX, C9. Um, I think that might be it. Obviously, a world-class top laner, very aggressive, gets himself caught out time to time, but he's on Rainbow 7 now in Latin America. He's an upgrade over Bong. And then they have Lava, who played with Breon a couple years ago and played in CB Law last year, played, in, played with HLE as well, I believe, over his career. In mid lane, he's an upgrade over Myru. So Rainbow 7 is better than they were last year. They were competitive last year at international events. So there's no reason, in my opinion, to believe they're not a top 25 team. When, frankly, you see them against top two to four teams in a given major region, and they're getting blown out. But when we have a top 25, we have the arguably ninth to 10th best LPL team on the board, right? So we're not like, yeah, Rainbow 7 lost the fourth best team, but we all know there's a difference between the 10th best LPL team and the fourth best. So just as an example, so Rainbow 7, 25th. Next, in 24th, I have Vitality. Um, Vitality will be a slow start, in my opinion, as they get used to each other, uh, bringing in Vathio and, and Hillasung. But Photon, Daglas, Karzi, I think they'll be able to get it done. Um, obviously, Karzi playing with, um, I believe he played with Photon. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I was wrong about that. Never mind. Never mind. Different, different Vitality. They're in Vitality. But Photon Taglas, obviously former teammates. Then you have Mac and Mad Lions in the bot lane with Karzi Hilly and Mbathia, who I consider to be a very strong mid. So Vitality, 24th. 23rd, PSG Talon, who got better from last year's roster, who was already pretty good. Um, I think PSG are a world-class team, are a threat to any of the, the major region teams when it comes to like the, you know, the third, fourth seeds. Um, Ozzy, Junjia returning. Uh, Maple is returning with PSG. They're bringing in Betty to pair with Woody. Betty is an upgrade over Waco. Betty had played in the LPL in the past, so I think that they are they are better than they were. 22nd, Team Wales. Um, I will be honest, when it comes to their roster, currently they still have uh, Artemis on there, but do not have Glory. If Glory comes back, they're there. Glory is a really good player. As is Sparta, in my opinion, a young player getting better. Bean J, young player getting better. BA might not be on that roster. But if it's the same roster as last year, Team Wales are, are 22nd. 21st, CFO Flying Oyster. 
And you may say, why do you have one Vietnamese team on here and, and two PCS teams and a PCS team above a VCS team after Worlds, right? Where the Vietnamese had uh, both spots locked up, I mean, to try and try and get out of, um, uh, get out of play-ins. So CFO have brought in Carsa. Yes, that Carsa. Uh, they've also brought in Gori. So they've brought in two players from major regions. Sean is still there. Sword Art and Zidane support. So they have three PCS veterans that have, been, sorry, two PCS veterans that have been in major regions for a long time. Gory, who's kicked around major regions. And Sean, who is a solid AD carry. And Rest, who is one of the better PCS top laners. CFO are going to be a threat to, to, to really beat up on um, those middling major region teams in my hypothetical. Um, after that, 20th, we have RNG. RNG, obviously, um, making a move at 80 carry. They bring in LWX. I don't know if LWX is really better than LP. I think LP gets a bad rap. Um, he looked fine with LNG, lost his job to Gala. Gala, obviously, is better than LP. And then, you know, was stuck trying to, you know, play with Lamau in bot lane with RNG and went to an 8-8 eight eight record. And they kept the top side, Breathe, Way, and Tang Wan. Tang Wan takes the next step. RNG get better. RNG are a pretty good team in that regard. Um, now, Ming is returning as well. So I think RNG are, shoot, they're easily a top 25 team. Um, next, 19th for now, Team Heretics. Um, so right now, my world's prediction video is on my computer, just waiting to get internet to upload. I'm not redoing it. I have said in that video which day I did it, the date, so people know um, it was prior to LEC Games beginning. Um, Heretics, I think, are going to be really good off the rip because they have familiarity. Uh, obviously, Wonder, Yankos, Perks, Flacket, they have familiarity with each other. Add Kaiser to the mix, that's a thing. But that team, I think, is going to hit the ground running. It's going to be a threat in winter. And um, that's just a reality of it. Frankly, I may have undersold them on this. But long term, throughout the entire year, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Fnatic, 18th. So, pretty good topside. Oscar Renan needs to take the next step. He looked good towards the summer. Let's see if he can continue that next this year. Um, June alongside Noah is nice, to say the very least. Um, but at the same time, we have to kind of, let's see how this all meshes, right? Fnatic had a really good last month and a half. Was that meta dependent? Was it not? Um, or are they the team from spring, right? Not winter, but, but necessarily spring. Um, Noah is better than Reckless, so I'd like to think they are okay, but... That's where I have them. Um, 17th, KDF. And you may say, why is KDF above Fnatic? Well, excuse me. I think Doodoo, Doodoo, Cuz, Bulldog definitely match. Um, Oscar Innan, Raz, or Cumanoid. I think Cuz is, is, is just fine. Um, was he the worst part of KT? Yes. But KT also were a really good team last summer, 17-1. and one. Um, obviously Humanoid can match anybody in mid lane, um, but Bulldog is going to get better. I am really looking forward to Bulldog this year and Doodoo with a quality jungler between them. And then the bot lane of Taeyun Andal is a question mark to say the least. And people would say, well, yeah, but Noah and June are definitely better than them. We have to keep in mind, Noah and June got booted out of the LCK. They weren't good enough anymore for the LCK. They had to go to ERLs or June in this case went right to LEC. Where these guys are still in the LCK. So yeah, your viewing experience of Tayun and Andal, they look worse because they are against much tougher competition. Think about that for a second. Noah came from the LCK where he was meh. Did he get a long leash? No, he only got a, a year, I think. Maybe not even, just a split. But still, goes to the ERLs, dominates, goes to LEC, looks very good. But he didn't look good in the LCK. So, I mean, to compare him to Taeyun, I mean, who knows what Taeyun would look like in the LEC. So, um, with that in mind, I have KDF above Fnatic. 16th, I have FlyQuest. Oh, um, Discord, 17th through 25th. Heretics, Weibo, Rare Adam, KDF, FlyQuest, Vitality, Anyone's Legend, SK, BDS. A lot of teams I don't have in my top 25. 
Um, 16th is FlyQuest. So, Whippo, very, very interesting top laner to say the least. One of the better Western tops, definitely. Um, probably second best behind Wonder. Um, Whippo is excellent. Inspired, probably second, third best jungler. I used to have him first. Yike comes into the picture. Inspired doesn't play. It affects things. I still think Inspired, if he does well this, this spring, he could easily be the best Western jungler again in my eyes. Um, Jensen, solid. He tried to do a 1v9 with Dig last year, only got so far. Now he's with Fly in a different situation, and that should be um, better for him. Masu and, and Busio in bot lane is an interesting bot lane. A very young bot lane, one that's going to show growth, hopefully. Um, and with that in mind, that's very interesting, right? I mean, like I just said, that's an interesting choice. That's something that we should take interest in, that we should really watch. Um, that fly, despite having these names in the top side of the rift, older in, in Jensen's case, you have very young players in bot lane with bright futures, um, despite them being North American. So I have fly 16th. I think that bot top side is, is really fun too. Um, 15th, I have Thunder Talk. I'll go do these teams both at the same time. Thunder Talk 15th, IG 14th. So, for the sake of this here, they're both teams that didn't change much from last year. IG have the same starting five that they ended the season with, where they went on a run, were able to beat JDG, and were very competitive. And I think that YSKM, if he's given an opportunity to, 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 to get more comfortable on stage and his practice habits are all worked out this past offseason, IG can be the team that we saw earlier last year that were in this area in the power rankings. They were that good of a team. Hell, I think the Discord had them in this column, and you know how I feel about that column if you've been around the block with me. So that team's fun. That's a hot pick this year. Um, do they crash and burn like OMG last year? Maybe. Now, um, Thunder Talk, similar thing. Four of the five from last year are returning. And frankly, they upgraded that support from Yao Yao Yu Yancha to Chow Chow and Feather. And 1XN has played with Feather in the past in LDL. That could be a duo immediately that hits the ground running. Yu Cal is excellent. Beshwan is, is good, but feeling pressure from Zhao Haogren. And, and then um, Hoya in, in the top lane. So, with that in mind, I think those two teams are, are right there. I think they have excellent pieces. Um, 13th, I have Cloud9. They have some of the best uh, North American players that they could pull out. I mean, they can't get much better than what they pulled out. Um, Fudge. Blabber, Jojo Pune, Berserker Vulcan, frankly, first, if not first, second best players in the roles. Domestically, probably the best team that um, North America has assembled. I have them 13th, and that's why, right? So Cloud9 last year lost NRG. NRG got two quarters, though, right? So we have to respect that fact that they did get to quarters. Yes, the Swiss stage, this, that, and the third, but they got there. Um, so Cloud9. 13th. 12th, I have KT. So we have a big question mark with this team. And it's the rookie perfect in top lane. Perfect is played in CK. He earned the right to have this opportunity. That's not to say he doesn't deserve it. But that is a question mark nonetheless. And then you have three of the five DRX players from 2022 that won Worlds but also went 9-9 nine and nine during the regular season and were a sixth seed and got and just went on a run, right? Um, and you could argue Zekka was the MVP for the entire world, and then Kingen was the MVP for finals, and those are the two players they don't have on their team. So, I mean, it, right? Like, Pioshik, BDD, Deft, Barrel, that's an old roster. Um, and perfect in top lane. We'll see what he does, see if they can bring him along, if he's weak-sided or if he gets a lot of attention because BDD is a facilitator. Maybe he goes topside, gives a little help, some roams from time to time. Daft and Barrel could be utility and weak side, just like they were on DRX. Um, so with that in mind, KT has the, the star power to be 12th to start the year. Excuse me. 
11th Weibo. Question mark in top lane, ZDZ. So ZDZ, um, unlike Zhao Hao, ZDZ has some iffy moments, to say the least. Um, into space off from time to time. But doesn't that remind you of the Weibo top laner from last year? Yeah. So with that in mind, and we're thinking of that, um, they're a good team. If ZDZ is inting his face off, it's just Weibo like it was last year when the Shy entered his face off. Zhao Hao, I think, is very good. Zhao Hao could have a Shun like glow up this year, except for the fact that he has ZDZ instead of Ben. If he had been in top lane, I think Zhao Hao would be this year's Shun. Zhao Hao has an excellent carry oriented ability. His Lee Sin is one of the best in the world. Um, just a really good player that was stuck on anyone's legend for far too long, and people kind of wrote him off. But I thought he was one of the best, if not the best, jungle uh, free agent this past year. So, Weibo, and obviously Zhao, Hu, Light, Crisp, those three are fine. Above them, 10th, I have Ninja in Pajamas. So we have Shanji. So we have Shanji, Rookie, Fodic. Three players I would consider in the top 10 in their roles easily. Then you have Aki. We'll see how Aki does. Now he doesn't have Cream in mid lane to really worry about. Rookie is more stable and um, can do more, offer more options for Aki. Fodic and Chu in bot lane, that has to get better. Last year, their Zeri Yumi was one of the better 2v2s, um, one of the better duos. Um, and obviously, Fodic Senna is, in my opinion, the best in the world. So, um, and, and apparently Senna might be really meta, I guess, from what people have been saying. So if that ends up being the case, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a situation for people playing uh, Nip. So Nip or 10th. And 9th, I have uh, G2. So one might wonder, okay, you put, you know, you, you put North America, you mentioned North America going to quarters, and that's why you had C9 where you did this, that, and the third. Now, why would you put G2 above C9 by so much? Well, if you follow traditional sports, I believe in the theory of any given Sunday, any given day, shit happens. And uh, G2 lost energy straight up. But if I were to have to put something of value on it, them playing again today, I would have taken G2 again. That's just the reality. So I'm doing that again right now. I think G2 are much better than C9. I think they offer more. Um, their flexibility with picks is insane. I think Yike can get better after these international uh, experiences. Um, eventually, they're going to hit a wall. But right now, I have G2 in ninth. Now, the Discord had an LNG, KT, C9, Fnatic, NIP, RNG, NRG, and PSG 9 through 16. Now, 4, 8 through 1st, if you are new here. This is usually the these teams I consider world's contending teams. These are the teams that, especially in the beginning of the year, I could see winning worlds when it's all said and done in eight months. As we go over the year, this will dwindle because we'll see teams that just don't have it because metas change every two weeks. Um, just a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. And then eventually all these little bits, these 5% changes, after five things, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, actually like a quarter of these games are really all over the place so um yeah let's go over these eight so uh eighth place we have d plus lucid i believe could be the real deal i do not watch show matches despite me egging on the discord and them thinking i did watch lucid mid or whatever the hell that was i don't watch abomination show matches i don't have the time to be wasting to do that so, um, I just think Lucid's very good. I thought he was the real deal in Challengers. King in alongside him provides him an opportunity to kind of just play carry-oriented champs. Um, Showmaker in mid hopefully gets along with Lucid and, and can kind of vibe immediately. We'll see. And the bot lane of Aiming and Kellen, I think, is going to be pretty good. Uh, Aiming is is um, high resource. One of the least gold efficient AD carries. Um, that needs to change. Zephyr needs to help him. Coaching staff hopefully improves things and also teaches somebody to shot call. That was the issue with the team last year, and we'll see if, if they can turn it around this year. Seventh, probably one of the bigger shocks, JDG for me. So 
I know some people are going to be like, that's too low. But there's just a massive question mark with Shear. Let's be real. There's just a massive question mark. What are we going to get? Oh, the Demasi Cup. G give me a break. I don't care about the Demasi Cup. Let's see games that matter. Let's see how he does in the playoffs when things actually matter. That's when I'm going to know what kind of player Shear is. And you'll say, yeah, but he's young and he's going to need time. It might be, and that's true. But that has to also be factored in. This isn't a top 25 for, for uh, th three years from now. Or next year when he's gone through it once. This is top 25. How do I feel top 25? In January of 2024. So with that in mind, they're seventh. Now, if they do the right thing, if Shear struggles and they put Flandre in, I think JVG are capable of winning Worlds. Because Flandre, I think, is capable of doing that. And Yagao and Flandre, that may not mix, but it just unlocks Kanavi. And Kanavi, on a carry-oriented jungler, can 1v9 or 2v8, 3v7 with Ruler missing, and then get the job done. So, uh, JDG are seventh. Sixth, LNG. So, big question mark at support. So, Weiwei is a downgrade from Tarzan, in my opinion. A lot of people disagree with me. I think that's the case. I think Tarzan's very, very good. Now, big question is support. Who are they going with? Mark or, or Hung? And until that's really solidified for me, and I've seen a couple series where I know this is what we're doing, um, LNG right now are where they are. I think with either or, they're still a world's contending team, but there is a difference in skill between the two. So LNG are sixth. Uh, uh, Zika, Scout, Gala, very good players. They're not, you know, going to be causing any problems. Fifth, Top Esports. And now you're going to notice, wow, he has all the LPL teams here after the LPL did so well at Worlds. He hates the LPL. Wah, wah, blah, blah. That's just a bunch of BS, man. Um, LCK has consolidated their talent. Um, i got to keep that in mind. And the LPL has dissipated their talent. Spread it out. Um, top, bring in Cream. Pretty good player. Um, they brought in 369. Very good player. That paired with Cream... That's those two go together well because 369 can facilitate if you want some team fight where Cream can play assassins and carries and things like that. Jungler Tian hopefully reigns in Cream better than Aki could have because Aki really doesn't have that um you know veteran experience like Tian does. And then the bot lane of Jackie Love Mako, maybe the best duo ever on paper. So top esports are fifth. Um they're they're a fun team. Fourth, HLE. So this is, um, you may say to yourself, yeah, but HLE didn't even make Worlds last year. How could they be so high? Um, this is more Gen G of 2023 than HLE of 2023. It's 60% Gen G, 40% HLE. HLE kept the carries of Zeka and Viper, but brought in Doran, Peanut, and uh, Delight. So HLE are very good. Top five in every role, eh, Zeka top 10. Um... Top 15, depending on meta. If he's got, if it's a Silas, a Kali meta, he may be one. But that's what we're talking about, right? Meta dependent mid laner. Other than that, though, HLE, obviously very good. Viper is outstanding. Absolutely disgusting. With the light, that team is going to be scary. It'll be there at the end. Uh, third, Gen G. You may say to yourself. But Gen G. How could you have them above LPL teams? Well, you know, they brought in uh, Keen, who internationally left a lot to be desired last year, and he really needs to up it at international events. But they brought in Canyon, who may be the best jungler ever to play alongside Chovy. And maybe that's what Chovy needed. We'll see. Bring Lahens to play with Pays. Lahens is still very good. So... Gen G gives me like JDG of last year vibes in the way that somebody has to fall on the sword and facilitate. Keen really isn't that, although he played a lot of Orin last year. Ch Canyon doesn't like doing that from what I understand. Chovy, we saw him last year do it, but I think in at his best, he's not doing that. And then the bot lane of Paisal Hens, I think that ends up being the area that falls on the sword. Weak side 80 carries. And from what I'm seeing in the Discord, that may end up becoming a thing anyways. So it should fit Gen G. That's a plan. So I have Gen G third. Um, second, BLG.
And then obviously first T1, let's just do that. Let's just get that out of the way. Rip the Band-Aid off. So uh, BLG Knight's better than Yagao, except on Azir. Internationally, I think that that's going to be a problem, like it was last year for JDG in some degree. Um, you can't, at the top level, you know, we, we like to joke and say players choke over making one itty-bitty mistake in a game, or this or that. Um, but don't can like criticize Knight for literally burning one of five bands every game because he can't play Azir. I mean, I think that would be more significant than, um, you know, a little screw up in a game. But either way, BLG are very good. Knight is better than Yagao over the aggregate. So with that in mind, BLG are, are second. They're very freaking good. Um, top lane, I'm uh, sorry, top lane first, T1. Everybody on the Discord, the six voters had that next year. I mean, no, sorry, next time. I hope there are more participants. If you'd like to participate, do it on the Discord. Do not give me your top 25 below. I don't give me an essay in the comment section. If you want to comment and do that, do it on the Discord with your top 25 power rankings there. Um, T1, obviously they won Worlds and they didn't change their damn team. They got actually an upgraded coach with Coma. So with that in mind, T1 are even better than last year in my mind. And they are first. Um, so I don't really have to go any farther into that. I think it's pretty obvious. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.